Hello, Kiefer. Uh, nice to meet you for the first time. And um, this this huge week for you as well, probably the biggest week of your career. Um, can you just tell us a little bit, little bit about how it came about? Obviously, a bit of a shock and so close to the actual event as well. Yeah, well, I've been training up for the Contender Series, which was supposed to be in October. Mm. And, um, you know, long story short, my, my me and my manager, Audi, have been back and forth. And we were wondering what's happening. They were trying to get me a good match. And... Um, a couple of weeks ago, he texted me saying, hey, the UFC reached out. They want your passport info and a background check, criminal record, all this kind of stuff, if you have any. And I was like, oh, that's a good sign because that means they're interested. And he said, yeah, the wheels are in motion now. So in my mind, I was like, lovely, I'm going to be on the Contender Series. Mm. And then I think it was like four or five days later, he, he rang me. It was like half ten at night. I'm, I'm sitting there with my girlfriend and he's like, listen, man, we got some bad news. But we also got some good news. And I was like, all right, go on, give me the bad news. And he's like, well, look, the contender series isn't going to work out. They don't want you on it. But welcome to the UFC. You got a multi-fight deal. And I was like, man, I need to me phone across the room. I was like, no way. And all in the same breath, he's like, oh, by the way, I'm fighting in two weeks in Sydney, Australia. And I was like, what the f***? <laughs> thought that was a bit crazy. But I was like, man, put me anywhere on this planet, yeah, whenever. And I'm going to show up and fight. So that was me mindset. And and here we are. Amazing, yeah. So you sort of like saved you, I don't know how long the contender series lasts, but it saved you a load of these months, isn't it? And a load of fights. You almost, you've almost almost skipped that process and you're straight in there. And is it Was it like disbelief for you? Because you've been open for, for years now that you, UFC has always been the goal for you, I think. You said since 2009. So did it almost feel a little bit surreal? It did definitely feel surreal because I was, I was shocked that it was like not the contender series straight in. I was expecting the contender series. Um, but like many people have said, including Connor and, and 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 stuff, like I'm better than the contender series. I shouldn't have to go through that route. You know, what I mean, that's for like young up and coming prospects that nobody really knows. I'm already a big name already. You know what I'm saying? In 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 the world of MMA and the world of fighting, and I have a whole country behind me already. And now, thank God, I'm I'm here in the biggest and best organization in the world of combat sports. And um, I just can't wait to strap them gloves up and make that walk to, and stand in that octagon finally after all these years of, of you know, envisioning this and, and dreaming of this. So it's it's literally a dream come true. It's literally a goal accomplished. And, you know, where I come from, not many people make art of themselves. You know what I mean? And that was my whole purpose here. That was my whole um, motivation was like, I'm going to do this. You know what I mean? Nobody can take this from me. I'm going to make it. So hopefully it'll inspire more people to, to, to walk hard and try and make something of themselves as well. Amazing. Yeah, you've done it the hard way, of course. You've you fought all over the place and different promotions and things like that. And it's almost a bit ironic, I guess, that um, you thought you had to do contender series and then it's turned out to be you didn't have to in the end. <laughs> After all this hard work, you've just got this little bit yeah. of little bit of joy at the end of it. And you just need to, I guess, you just need to prove now that this is where you've always belonged. Absolutely, man. Like it's it's all well and good getting a contract and doing interviews and blowing up on Instagram, and that's all great and that's all fantastic but it means nothing really you know what I'm saying the only thing that matters to me is making that walk and getting my hand raised and that's it that's that's my main sole focus here you know what I'm saying all the other stuff is just noise and, and promotion and it's great for everything like you know views and stuff but for me it's it's all about I have to make that walk laser focused and make sure I do everything in my power to win and that's exactly what I'm going to do Absolutely, yeah, and you've got this confidence in yourself, of course, and you've got so much support behind you. And you, you had this blockbuster start to your career, but then there was a couple of there's a bit in the middle, you know, through COVID, and you, you had a couple of losses as well. Was was there any ever doubt in your mind that this might not come, or did you always just view it as it was just a step back in the process? Those that that period where it didn't go your way. No, you see, people people judge people on their losses so much, and it's stupid. You know what I mean? This is fighting at the end of the day. It's almost like a football team losing a football match and then you may as well tell them to just stop playing football. It's like Manchester United loses a, a match eventually and they're like, you know what, maybe you should just think about something else. It doesn't work like that. But for some reason, for fighters, people just think, yeah, you lost one or two, so maybe you're done. Do you know what I mean? And it's like, man, if that's your mindset about anything, you're never going to make anything of yourself. With me, man, I got to have 15 losses in a row. I'm going to show up for the 16 fight and I'm going to try and knock you out. It's just who I am. It's... It's you can listen to the people or you can listen to yourself I only ever lost one fight in my whole career if you really want to be specific about it and, and that's it and that's one fight out of all my fights so and regardless of the wins or the losses name a fight that hasn't been exciting name a fight that has you never looked at me fighting going he's actually pretty boring I don't like watching his fights every single one of my fights is the most exciting fight you've ever watched 
and I'm only getting going. Now, now I have a bigger platform to be more exciting for the world. So whatever, do you know what I'm saying? It wins, losses, that's records are for DJs. That's what we say where I come from. Do you know what I mean? So like I'm I'm here to fight me hard though and put on some of the best fights that you've ever seen. That's my main goal here. So yeah, I suppose in MMA as well, it's sort of anyone can lose a fight any second. It's not like boxing, is it, where people can go, you know, 30 and 40. And even in boxing, I think that mindset has to change in boxing yeah. too. Like you see guys and they're like 30, you know, and then they lose one and people are like, oh, you're done. You should just give up. It's like, man, when did that happen? Do you know what I'm saying? Like back in the day with the boxers, you'd have a guy who's like 98 wins, 26, and they just keep fighting and they would just keep fighting. So I don't understand where that mindset has come from. It's like you have to have the perfect record or you're, you don't matter. And I think boxing has gone down that route in uh, recent years. And I think that's wrong, to be honest. I think every fight should just be a great fight. Go out and do your best. Obviously, every other prize for it, get paid. And yeah. put on some of the greatest fights that you can. Of course, try to win. But, you know, in MMA, it's so hard to keep that zero. It's yeah. so hard to keep that zero. And if you lost and, and you, you feel like you should just quit, I don't think it was for you to begin with. A loss will never turn me off this sport. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? I'll, I'll hang this up when I feel like I want to walk away or I'm just not into it anymore. But for me, it's just all about all this, everything, the build-up, the I'm inspiring people here. I get to train every day. I get to travel the world and I get to go out and do what I love. That's really what it's about and win. And I'm a competitor. And I'll stand in front of any human being on this planet and fight them until I'm dead or someone's dragging them off me. And I'll, I'll just, that's just who I am. So maybe I'm mental. I don't know, but that's just who I am. <laughs> I wanted to ask you of the Ireland flag behind you there, and there's, there's no conversation about Irish USC without Conor McGregor as well. And and you've been, you know, you've had you've spoke to him in the past, and also you've been close in the past as well. And what what does that mean just to have him? He put a little comment, didn't he, on your on your contract, and just to have him behind you, but all of Irish MMA as well. It's it's a really close knit sort of group, isn't it? Um, and I've been looking up to Conor for many many years. He's a really close friend of mine. Do you know what I'm saying? And uh, I went, he flew me over to Cannes to do some training. When he when he FaceTimed me straight away when. He found out about the contract and we talked for a while on the phone. He was so happy for me. Gave me some seriously good advice. Studied my opponent, broke him down, gave me great details. And he's just over the moon for me. He knows how much this means to me. He knows I'm a family man. He knows that I've been working towards this for many years. And he inspired a whole country. You know what I mean? Let's not just forget that. Like, you've no idea. Like, and he changed the dynamic of Ireland. You know what I mean? Not just Irish MMA, Ireland. You know, people changed when he burst into the UFC and he, he almost injected a confidence in young men in our country. And just, he is the guy that like really lifted us at one stage uh, from 2013 onwards. And he changed that. And I've looked up to him ever since. And when he got in there, I was like, man, this is incredible. Do you know what I'm saying? All you have to do is put the work in and believe in yourself. Like, listen to what he's saying. He, he's like wrote a script here on, on success in Ireland. Do you know what I mean? He's, he come, we come from very similar places, me and Connor. We come from nothing, really, do you know what I mean? And, a, and a, a, an area of mindset of people that like just work a normal job and don't really aim to a high type thing. But he <laughs> shot up to the moon like within a rocket and just took over the world. And I, I just, yeah, I just feel like, you know, he's just such a big impact in the world right now. Do you know what I mean? He's the biggest star, really, isn't he? Like, so, and he comes from an area in Dublin. That's not too far from my area. It's incredible. So. I'm very proud to call him a friend, to be honest. And I, I lo- I've looked up to him for many years. And uh, uh, if I can get 1% of his success, I'll be a happy man. <laughs> so uh, now it's my time to carve my own path and make my own name. So I'm happy, yeah. Yeah, and there's been a lot of sort of Irish fighters coming back into the UFC. And, and there's hints that there's going to be a card next year. And some of the guys that are coming, it hasn't gone their way. Of course, you've got Ian Gary where it's all going his way. But but do you feel like it's a bit of pressure? I mean, if, if this island card's a potential for next year... That's going to be something that you're going to be desperate to be a part of, isn't it? I'm going to be 100% on that card. Give it over now. You can't come to my hometown, my country, and not put me on the card. You know what I'm saying? Let's be real here. You know what I'm saying? That would make no sense. The tree arena is five minutes from my home. So, like, I'm going to be on that card 100%. And I'll even be shouting for a main or a co-main event slot. So I'm I'm 100 confident that I'll be on a UFC Dublin card. No doubt in my mind. Yeah, that'd be that'd be so <laughs> right. And I just asked about this fight as well. Obviously, there's so much to talk about, but we haven't actually talked about the fight yet. Uh, Kevin, do you say your opponent? He's a debutant as well. I mean, what do you know about him? What, how much can you sort of learn about your opponent on this on this short notice sort of fight? Loads. You know what I mean? I've looked him up. Of course, he's a solid lad, well rounded. Comes from a really good gym. 
he's had some hard fights, you know what I mean? He looks like a solid uh, grappler, judo head, good striker, tall. You know, there's a lot to take from him, of course, you know what I mean? I don't take anyone lightly, but nothing I haven't seen a hundred times before. It's going to be a hard fight. Every fight in the UFC is hard. Um, but when you flip it around, he's thinking the same thing about me too. I'm not an easy fight for anyone in the world, so... It's going to be a great fight and it's really going to come down to whoever wants it is going to win it. You know what I mean? I think that's what it's really going to come down to. Skills are so good. Like, I mean, you know, I believe I'm the more skilled fighter, of course, but it's going to really come down to whoever really wants this is going to win it. And I believe I want them more. So I think that's what you're going to see in there. It's going to see two dogs dogging it out to try and make an impression on their debut and nobody can dog it out more than me. Amazing. Thanks very much, Keith. I'll let you go. Fingers crossed to be tuning in and hopefully you get it done. Thanks, boss. See Thanks you very soon. much, mate.